Ladies and gentlemen, we are recording. Oh my goodness. The world may be ending. We may be trapped in our own homes. We cannot get to Danger Studios to see each other. But the Danger Club podcast is still happening. And one thing has happened which is positive for the world. I finally have a desk to run a game from. Hello, everyone. And welcome to the first yeah. remote recorded episode of the Danger Club podcast. Yes. yes. Uh, now, I'd just oh like to point out my. that uh, I was in no way responsible for the purchase or provision of this desk, so uh, <laughs> my point still stands. <laughs> I, my line in the sand. I will die on this hill, Thompson. I'm uh, but, so yeah. happy. Hi, guys. I am... I'm spread out everywhere. This is great. Hello, guys. Oh, it is it is good to be back. Uh, good to be back recording. It's been so long since we uh, put together an episode. So um, It was. Yeah. Lots of I things know. have changed. Oh, in my goodness. In, yeah. in life as well. It, it's been a uh, it's been quite a ride, hasn't it? It's uh, I tell you what I <laughs> Th- thanks for that, Russ. That's it's yeah. been a bumpy ride. <laughs> yeah, I I, um, I feel foolish for my uh, my joke about how the Formula One season has started. I'm probably watching something on my iPad during an episode a couple of weeks ago because that didn't end up happening. Um, I'm I'm very glad that I didn't call the Tengu band in um, episode 97, um, COVID 19, uh, yeah, which is ma'am. still a good pun, but my God, <laughs> would not have felt. So no. good right now. Um, oh, do you remember how, those days? Do you remember oh those days? How Cyan days? It's all just a bit yeah. of a joke. Yeah, yeah. It's Whoops. how Cyan days. Is it Halcyon days? Halcyon days. Halcyon. 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 Tweeters danger. I'll see you, Jimmy. I'll see you. I'll see you. None of that. We'll have no, none of that this episode. Thank you. Now remember, because we're we're recording remotely, Dangerlings. Uh, I can't cut any of this. Uh, yep. if we talk over each other so this is going to be really fun to edit um, you know if we all say something really bad then it's going to be left in so enjoy that <laughs> enjoy that Danger <laughs> uh, Yeah. we should say what we're doing we should say what we're doing oh, yeah. because if you've just picked up this episode some of you if you're not on our social media will have been sitting here expecting episode 100 uh, to have appeared because last week <laughs> was episode 99 uh, this is not episode 100 this is the first episode of our lockdown special specials of our remote records uh, there were a few reasons for that mostly uh, we didn't have all of episode 100 recorded when um, the quarantine hit um, we had some of it but not all of it and uh, so we had a chat we had to think about what we wanted to do and basically we decided that we wouldn't be able to do the version of episode 100 that we wanted to do through remote record um, I, I think these episodes are going to be pretty good I think they, we're going to find a new way to do it but it's going to be a different kind of show to the kind of show we normally put out uh, and that means that it didn't feel right to do something so massive as episode 100 something so important um, when we're not in the same room so much of what we do is about the chemistry we're in the same room and we're sparking off each other like that um, so we still wanted to bring you episodes so what we're doing for the next few weeks because we don't know how long this will last for, we are going to be telling you a story from the past of one of the Danger Club members, one of your favourite Danger Club characters, uh, or possibly one of your least favourite Danger Club characters, because, uh, you know, we've all got our own secret rankings somewhere, uh, and we all know it's Philippe, and then everyone else sort of somewhere down there. Um, But we're going to find out uh, who that is in just a moment. So we're going to tell these, we're going to tell this whole story, and then we'll see where we are by the time we start to get to the end of that story. And maybe we'll do another one. Who knows? It's a fun journey, but we're all going on it together. Um, And it will be exciting. Importantly, how how are you guys? Ross, how are you dealing with lockdown? I know you love your trips to the barbers. How is your incredible fade going at the moment? Is it's it not going out? anywhere. I mean, it's just growing out. I just look like um, a bit of a homeless man. Um, I, I would do the I would do the lockdown uh, shave off thing, but um, nah, I'm just going to leave it. Just grow grow my beard out, grow my hair out. Uh, I'm doing the opposite Britney Spears um, thing, where you, you don't shave uh, and you don't <laughs> shave anything off. <laughs> Uh, that is the, no, the known thing for being an opposite of Britney Spears. That is the yeah. thing that is the opposite of Britney Spears, right? Forget the music. Yeah, exactly. It's all about the hair. It's reverse yeah. Britney, bitch. Yeah. Scott, <laughs> Scott, you are the most active person I know, I think. Like, the only times when you're not doing things is when you are listing the things that you're about to do. Like, how, how are you coping with being stuck indoors? It's got to be crazy. 
Uh, well, actually, Dan, I, I'm speaking through one of my clones right now. I don't have to keep doing this. So, <laughs> from, the, from the dark vat that I'm sat in. Uh, yeah, it's, it's been okay. Actually, uh, Ross, uh, I actually committed to the lockdown shave, as you can see. So, you know, I actually did shave my head there, Ross. So, you know, I, mean, step I up can't easy, see because. Step up. I mean, it's the only <laughs> thing I mean, we can, can see. It's the... off my head. Um, uh, yeah, just... it's been all right, actually. Just for uh, the dangerlings at home, Scott's sitting. We were on a video chat, uh, and Scott is in a really dark room. We can hardly see him. <laughs> if you do not meet my demands, then I will blow up one part of LA every seven hours. Um, the, yeah. it's, it's actually, just for context, it's actually really light in my room. It's just this bit that is dark matching me and my soul. Um, so, sure, yeah. Yeah, lockdown. It's been again okay. I think I've been sort of like I've got I've been lucky enough to have a garden, so I've been out in that quite a bit. And then I'm doing a lot of games and stuff that I'm running for people. And There's only one day of the week cooking. that I think Scott hasn't played a D and D game or run run a game. Um, you'll know from his and, tweets. Uh, and yeah, yeah. It's been it's been fairly busy. I have still got my Fridays free. If you want to go, if you want to go on a game, <laughs> you know, you know. I've got a Friday. Anyone, night. anyone want to get Scott to run him a game? <laughs> Tweet us. Come and play with me in the darkness. <laughs> I did the same on the. I did the same as soon as lockdown kicked in. I was like, well, I play role playing games, so I'm going to play role playing games every single day, and was GMing Starfinder three times a week. And uh, and running, um, I've been doing some GM for higher gigs, and we pl- and playing Five E on Mondays. Um, and within like two weeks, my mental health tanked <laughs> just completely, and I was like, "Oh God, no! I'm doing too much. I'm doing things all the time." And so just scaled it all right back. And now I'm like, "Oh, good. There we go. I've got a sort of a mix, a nice balance now that I can cope with." But it has been. It's been forever since we've done this. Uh, James, you've been getting it. Like, you've got a bit outside space, haven't you? So you can get out a little bit. Yeah, I've got an old car park. Uh, yes. So, yeah, that's that's nice. I just go and crawl and myself around on my, on my belly. And some AstroTurf. I, well, I have got my little urban garden in the corner, it's true. Um, but, yeah, no, I think uh, I'm just lucky that I've got a bit of space to rumble around. I am currently the only member of the Danger Club who is in Danger Towers, obviously. Um, and, yeah, just thankful to have a, a bit of space to roll around. But there's good days and bad days. I think everyone's facing uh, their own unique set of challenges, even though the situation we find ourselves in is the same. So, um, but, no, uh, it's, been, it's been all right. It's been all right. Doing a lot of cycling. Got, got big thighs now. Great. I wanted yeah. to get, I wanted to get <laughs> a bike, an exercise bike off Amazon. They're, they're uh, all sold out. So that's really yeah, amazing. yeah. Home, home fitness equipment is is yeah. gold dust at the moment. I, I ordered some home fitness equipment from China uh, just before the lockdown in preparation for it. I can tell you, it currently has not left China. <laughs> it's made its way across. I think it's taking the Silk Road. I think that's how it's getting. I, I do. I do love the way though that, that you think. Yes, I know that. I know that everything's shut down. But for Dan Thompson, they will ship it from China because I am Daniel Thompson. I want my fitness equipment no, now. The website was unspecific about where it was. The website said multiple international distribution centres. It just turned out that all of them were in China. Yeah. 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 Um, no, it's yeah, it's all it's it's ridiculous. That's what you it? get from trusting Facebook ads. Oh, uh, Facebook ads! One of Colin, one of my one of my favourite bits um, of lockdown so far is uh, is the fact that um, my wife and your partner have formed the Finer Things Club, where they uh, <laughs> where they have video chats and do colouring and have a book club together. And every now and then, you or I appear in the background and just bring them food. Yeah, that seems to be the. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah, if you've ever watched the American Office, the Finer Things Club, they sort of read, I don't know, books and have tea parties and things like that. That's basically. What our partners are doing when uh, on a on a Monday. Um, so yeah, there you go. Yes, Scott, what have you got to Colin, say? Colin, I was I was just going to say I go actually I'm reminded of something just then. Before I, um, I during a D and D session with my housemates the other night, I made a vegan chilies and it was actually it was actually okay. And I wanted to just say that Colin, uh, now I can make vegan chilies as well. So I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> uh, not a challenge or anything. Oh. I just want to let you know, buddy. Oh, it's a, chili uh, it's a lockdown chili off. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, boom. <laughs> chili off. <laughs> do you, sir? Do you really, sir? Well, sir. How do we uh, judge good. that? How do we judge a lockdown chili? We have I'll to like, uh, send each other a bit in the post. And 
hope no, you that we've got. Oh, what we need to do oh, is like do, do it like an old style duel and find somewhere sort of you know out in the common, nice and secluded. Have a second and then just uh, two meters apart, place your chili and then you know nice and just nice with, and orderly. Just with a couple of jalapenos, just waiting yeah, in yeah, each other. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you got some good chili. Oh yeah, check this chili out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, Put it I, one I, thing that takes uh, walk back four meters. You know. <laughs> One thing that you will notice uh, from this recording is that there is no drum and bow skill uh, on this uh, on this record right now, which is foolish actually because it, it's audio. So we could have just done an impression of him um, and uh, and filled it in. Um, yeah. but, uh, Should we yeah. go around and do our best drum impressions? Oh, I don't know. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, right. drum's fine. We should be very clear. <laughs> yeah, drum's okay. Drum's okay. So yeah, drum had. Right, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Drum had a new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, I'm fine, man. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, given the medium of sound that you're listening on, you're missing the hand actions that Ross is throwing in there. Um, <laughs> I love that. The five drums. Ross is very much a drums. visual medium. That's a, Best pub in London, that. Tell you what, <laughs> yeah. the five drums. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, Drum and his lovely wife Holly had a baby uh, right before the quarantine started and are very busy being parents. He's being super dad at the moment. Congratulations. Uh, he may be joining us for some of these episodes. Basically, what we've said to him is that if you get a quiet moment uh, because you have a toddler and a newborn baby um, to look after if you have a quiet moment and you want to jump on uh, and join us he has a character we'll get it into the story we'll, we'll have a section of that um, but otherwise um, we'll see how it goes so you may or may not hear Drummond at certain points during this adventure that is the, uh, the fun thing um, that we're going to have to play with on this and with that in mind let's see how this goes shall we Ooh. Ooh. Oh, sick wolf. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sick wolf. Um, so we begin our story uh, looking down on the Danger Club as they are camped by the side of the, uh, the Selen River on their way to Absalom. We can see Captain Gumbo's boat, a rusty button moored up at the side, uh, and the Danger Club sat around a fire, uh, talking to each other. Philippe is dozing in the corner, dreaming of horrible things. Captain Gumbo is uh, slowly warming up some water with a candle in a bucket. Um, and we see that the Danger Club are talking, they are discussing uh, something from the past. And as we watch that, we pull back away from them, through the clouds, and we make our way back to Varicia. Specifically, we make our way to an area just outside the town of Riddleport in western Varicia. Um, and we go back 20 years into the past where we find ourselves looking down on a ramshackle wooden structure in a small town just outside of Riddleport. Um, a sign hangs over the, the uh, entrance to it that says Master Olivan's Gladiator School. Uh, so we're looking at kind of an arena-type setup, like a, not like the Colosseum. It's, uh, it's very, very regional, very small. We go through the entranceway, and we see there are sort of some rooms off to the side, uh, move into the center, and we see that there is uh, a fighting pit right in the middle, dust scattered uh, all over it, barrels and things stacked around, some weapon ranks, uh, racks uh, around the edges of it. There are some figures up in the stands looking down. It's not full, it's not a sort of a big uh, fight night. Um, it looks more like a training uh, sort of exercise. Uh, and there are two figures stood facing each other in the middle of this arena. Um, Scott, who is one of the figures in the arena? His name is Felix. He is a dwarf. He has got a thatch of red hair. Some on his head, a lot on his chest. His uh, hair smokes. He has red flickering eyes and a couple of tattoos that are like a consolation prize for not being as brave as he might think. Uh, his name is Felix. Licks the dwarf and standing across from that dwarf on the other side of the arena, Colin, who is standing facing the dwarf? 
so standing opposite the dwarf, uh, we have a human. He's about 5'9". He's got brown, uh, short hair, shaved around the sides and back, sticks up on the top. Not quite a mohawk, but definitely in that sort of vein. He's wearing leather armor, um, which has some little metal chains and rings here and there all over it. Um, over that, he wears a sheepskin waistcoat. He has light brown kind of striped trousers on and big brown boots. And when he stands in there, he looks kind of strong and solid in his stance with a constant sort of half smile on his face. Like everything doesn't have to be serious, but um, he, you know, he, he looks quite logical and methodical as well. His name is Rory Bavori. Rory Bavori <laughs> and Felix standing across from each other in the arena. We're going to do something we haven't done before uh, at the start of a story. Felix, Rory, roll for initiative. Whoa! Whoa. All right. Crazy times. That's crazy, crazy. crazy. <clears throat> All right, initiative, initiative. Here we go. Imagine if we kill one of the characters right now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Felix? Nine. Ten. Yeah. Oh, Clash of Titans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. rolls there. Rory Bravori, you are the first to go uh, in this in this contest of wills in this battle. What's happening? You are currently um, you are currently twenty five feet away from each other. Okay. Yeah. Three actions. I'd like to. Well, Rory would like to run up to the dwarf with his Aldori dueling sword. Uh, for he is an Aldori duelist. Yes, his name is Rory Bavori. He is Aldori swordsman. We'll go into that later, I'm sure, unless he dies. Um, and he would like to strike with that sword um, <laughs> on a natural one. Yes! <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, I have the cards you- here. <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> no, no, I'd like no, to. I'd like to say. No, so, I'd like to say something as well. Rory would like to say something. Please do say something. Listen here, dwarf. There's nothing that can't be solved with logic, and I am a logical human, and I'm sure that you are a logical uh, dwarf. So here we are, and I'm going to strike you now with. My sword, so yeah. I fail to <laughs> understand the logic in striking me with sword. If you fail to do so, <laughs> he does fail to do so. And having drawn the uh, the fumble card, it is punt. Your weapon flies one d four times five feet in a random direction. <laughs> okay. That's ten feet. Amazing. You swing the sword and it sails over, out of your grip, over Master Swordsman, out of your hand, over the dwarf's head, and lands ten feet behind him in the dirt. <laughs> and uh, Felix watches that go and then goes. In dwarven, we have a word for this. It is yeet. Oh, <laughs> uh, you've got. I mean, I've you've got, got one, one action, action left. Though. Can I run to get my sword? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you run over. You run over to your sword. You don't have any oh, actions left to out. pick it up, but you run over to. Oh, it. whoops! And then I run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a strong Start first round mean. of this adventure, yeah. Felix. What's happening? Uh, Felix was uh, un- unnerved and very sort of intimidated previously, and now is more bemused um, and s- sort of cocks his head and sort of half smiles himself as he turns round. How much distance is there between me and this Rory now? Uh, so there's ten feet from you. Ten feet. Um, he uh, Felix adopts a stance and squares his feet in the sand. Is it sand? Yes, it is sand sort of squares his feet in the sand and says, uh, you know, we don't have to fight. Uh, uh, it seems that uh, you do not actually want to fight, so uh, we could talk if you like. Uh, I am quite into talking. <laughs> cool, right? okay, well, I'll just, I'll just <laughs> oh, No, 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 let, let's, let's, let's have I a... run towards him and Floria blows him. <laughs> <laughs> Literally just about to say something. I was just waiting I for the delay. I want it on the record. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. You, you do you. You do you. 
<laughs> cool, I have Flurry of Blows, please. I close the distance. I, but I flurry. want it on the record that I did offer peace first. Flurry of Blows. So it's one action. You get two melee strikes. Um, first one has no penalty. Second one is at minus four. Uh, and you add. Uh, and you do damage for both. Uh, f- first one was 17. Nope. Next Ooh. one was 28. A twin. <laughs> that does hit. Yeah. That does hit. That is so nearly a critical. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Just one hit. There. Just one hit. Just roll some one. damage, and then you got a, you got one more action after that. <laughs> Eight points of Eight points damage. of damage to Rory, um, and then uh, you have one more action. Uh, I use it to step back and say, "Are you okay?" <laughs> 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 oh blimey! That that uh, that did uh, that took rather rather a rather a, b- a big blow into my um <clears throat> into my arm there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realise that uh, <laughs> that was going to happen. I'll be honest with you. I am quite a decent swordsman most of the time. <laughs> I, I believe you, but would you rather sit down and talk? You look a little bit shaken by me feasting you. Uh, maybe um. <laughs> Maybe after a fisting, a good conversation would be uh, uh, the done thing. Um, <laughs> yes, let's uh, let's yeah. let's maybe sit down and, 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 and converse for a while. Oh, you narrate everything. That's so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, a figure at that point comes walking out from the one of the tunnels at the side um, he is a human man um, he is very heavily built he has a, a mop of sandy coloured hair um, and a, a, a beard to match um, he has a, a scar running down one side of his face uh, and he's wearing leather armour um, as you're approaching he uh, holds up his hands uh, and just says break, break uh, I mean I'm not sure I need to tell you to break, I think you already broken already. I'm not even sure that Rory started fighting really in that, in that one. <laughs> Both of you recognize the man as Argus. Argus is the head gladiator. He is the trainer at the gladiator school of Master Olivan, um, and he is the star of any shows uh, that you go to. So he's the one who has been overseeing this practice fight. Um, he uh, pats Rory on the shoulder and says, well, you... I mean, it's an interesting play. Um, maybe you uh, were you trying to throw him out, or uh, I don't quite know what you. I don't really know. I mean, <laughs> what's happened is I t- you went to swing for him in the training style uh, with finesse, and um, <clears throat> for some reason my dueling sword just flew over his head. I mean, you couldn't write it, really, could you? Oh. Even if you were trying to write one of those comedy plays that we see every two weeks. <laughs> In, in in the staff <laughs> quarters. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If I may, uh, Argus, uh, Felix steps forward uh, a little bit uncertainly and then looks down and sort of kicks the dirt. Um, I, I, I do love the, the Fortnite the plays that we get to see, uh, but I think what uh, Rory was doing was trying to distract me by doing the thing I would least expect, and it certainly did distract me. So well done, Rory. <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind <laughs> for the compliments. And I uh, uh, do one of those shakes where you don't shake a hand, but you shake the arm, you know? Oh. Those kind of uh, manly oh, yeah. grasps. That's so manly. No, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to gender. What is it. this? <clears throat> why, why, what is, why are we not shake on the hand? Oh, this is to show true friendship. Uh, when you meet someone who you uh, highly respect, uh, this would be a, 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 a genuine uh, shake uh, for someone. So thank you very much uh, for the looks, shake. <laughs> Felix looks shocked. Um, and then, like, sort of steps forward and goes, Oh, oh great, OK, yeah, respect. Uh, and goes in and adopts the sort of elbow shake. You do some elbow shaking. Cool. Uh, truly the Alduri are master swordsmen. <laughs> See, your reputation is intact. Come, get the servants in here to clean up. Uh, he waves a hand uh, and two figures uh, emerge from the tunnel afterwards, um, carrying um, brooms and shovels uh, to do some cleaning up. Uh, Ross, what is one of the figures? 
Uh, one of the fingers is a shuni, which is basically a giant, well, not a giant, well, it is a giant pug, basically. Uh, he's about three foot. Um, uh, he's like sort of beige uh, fur. Um, he's got a little tuft uh, of brown hair on the top, like a little, like a kind of like a troll, like, you know, one of those old <laughs> toy trolls. It's not as long as that, but it's like, it's kind of like just sticking up. Um, he's just got like a normal cloth, like a cloth shirt and just some uh, leggings, breeches or whatever. Um, and he's ho- holding a shovel. Um, and yeah, he's also, he also has glasses. He's very charismatic um, for, a, for a giant dog. Um, <laughs> You think it's probably because he's um, quite nice. He's, like, very nice. Um, he doesn't seem very... Yeah, he's got a very nice aura about him. Um, yeah, he comes out. Amazing. And what's his name? His name is Basco Mops. <laughs> here's a little, uh, here's a little, uh, little tease Mops. for your um, uh, little fact about Basco. Basco is Queen Victoria's favourite dog, and Mops was um, Mary Antoinette's dog. So, um, yeah, there you go. Basco mm. is still Queen Victoria's favourite dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the yeah, oldest who comes dog out. in the world. <clears throat> um, think basically, I- basically Frank from Men in Black. Just think that. Amazing. Uh, and those of you who were on our live stream uh, um, a couple of weeks ago will know this is the character that you helped create on, on our live stream. So this, this character was created by the Dangerlings and is based loosely on some of si- on Simonstrous Art's uh, actual pugs. Um, big up Dangerlings. Big up yep. the Dangerlings. I mean, uh, and will, James, of him. finally, who is the other character alongside this pug? The other character is uh, he's a, a young sylph man. Uh, he's quite uh, he's quite tall, about six foot tall. He's wearing a, uh, a plain sort of linen, kind of a tunic thing. It's quite long, but um, tied with a rope around his middle. Um, he's looking, well, you know, pretty uh, pretty gangly. I don't think um, I don't think youth suits him particularly well. He's got uh, swirling patterns on his skin, and he's wearing a pair of sandals and uh, a slightly disaffected look. And uh, he's also carrying a long broom, uh, which has been heavily used over his shoulder, and uh, walks with something of a slouched, the slouched shoulders of uh, the disaffected youth. So, yeah. <laughs> and uh, in case anyone hadn't guessed, what is the name of this sylph that has just uh, come gangling out? Caragor what no I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> it's Velda Kernblight. Yeah. Oh, oh a young Velda Kernblight, yeah. The young Velda Chronicles. Yeah. Um, Velda and um, Basco, you come running up out of the uh, out of the tunnel to uh, to do your duty and clear up sweep up the arena after a fight has taken place. We'll call it a fight, let's be generous. Um, <laughs> Um, so you, the two of you come out to uh, do your duty. You've been working all day. The two of you have been working for years together, um, keeping the arena clean, sweeping everything up uh, when you need to. Um, and so you come running up into the arena to uh, to do your job. Argus um, pats you on the back as you go past um, and says, uh, "Just says, good job. Not too much. Uh, not too much um, blood or." I mean, anything to really clear. You can pick up, <laughs> pick up Rory's sword exactly. for him, I suppose. Yes. Don't understand what they're cleaning up. You're just making them do work for no reason. I mean, Look, there is well, nothing just, on the floor. Well, we've, we've, hey. got to put the, we've got to put the sand back where it was and, um, you know, to tidy up a little. Yeah, it's a living. What can I say? <laughs> yeah. <Exactly. laughs> um, oh, Vasco. I tell you what, about Basco, I don't think I've... Why did he throw his sword? I don't think I've ever seen I that. I don't know. He's supposed to be a master swordsman. He I mean, that was... very masterful. It was, it was extraordinary what he did, but um, I couldn't work out what it was maybe for the he, life of me. Maybe he was going to do some sort of magic thing, like, you know, go run and dive and pick it up and then slice him or something. Hmm. Or maybe he just fell over. I'm not sure, really. Yes, maybe it's a, maybe it's a mistake, but uh, oh well, never mind. Can um, we can we hear what's what they're oh, saying? Oh yeah, yeah, you're yeah. you're all in the same area. Yeah, okay. you're all together. Uh, uh, hello, they, uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I just uh, overheard oh, you uh, talking about my uh, swordsmanship, and uh, uh, yes, I, I I don't mind admitting that uh, that uh, <laughs> that I fumbled there, and uh, my sword uh, uh, flew out of my hands. 
So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Do you, was... have, do you have particularly sweaty hands? Is 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 it your? Sp- uh, actually, my hands are um, usually very dry. So uh, it's 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 <laughs> it, it, uh, it, it it is a wonder that today, uh, of all days, uh, that uh, that they're not. So. <laughs> oh. Oh. If, if you have uh, sweaty hands again, then I can warm your hands and dry them again with with my. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> oh dear! Uh, should, we, should we get some fruit for him? I, I think he's having another another one of his episodes. Uh, yeah, uh, never mind. Uh, it was oh, pretty impressive, you, though. Oh, thank you very much. What's your name? Again? My name is Bathgo. You know, I I usually come out and clean up the the poop. The, uh, the scoop, and now for the boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Why is there poop on the floor of a fighting well, arena? Well, well, you never know. When you die, you do lots of things, you know. You poop, you scoop, and you do boop, boop. Yes, and, and don't forget Poopo the Magnificent. I mean, it was his finishing move, and um, oh, true. Gosh, we also had a lot of work to do after those. Yes, yeah. yes, I remember. Oh, yes, Basco, I, 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 I do remember your, your, your face. I'm, I'm so sorry that I don't remember your name, but I'll, I'll make an effort to, to remember that from now on. And you, That's young okay. sir, what's your, your name? Uh, I, I'm, I'm Velda. Oh, hello, Velda. Well, this is my friend Felix. We are definitely Ooh. friends. Hello. But you're fighting each other. Uh, yes, but we are yes. in training, you see. He he, he you punched know. you really hard. Yes, but uh, sometimes a friend is is, is someone who uh, can fight and then, um, you know, go on from there in a relationship. Oh, oh good. <laughs> Velda punches Basco. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Just not... Oh, yeah. Was it like that? Oh. Oh, um, yes, yes. You're all just I thought you were now. talking I'm... to Basco. I don't... <laughs> Oh, oh I'm no! Confused. I, 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 it's sorry, might I was, be the way that we're one, looking Velda. at each other on a I, I'm screen. So, sorry, I, I, I thought that was what. Fr- fr- okay, sorry. sorry. That's okay. What friends do is do this, and Felix grabs Velda's elbow. Ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 ow! Friends. <laughs> Oh, I see. Yes, um, uh, Rory um, grabs the other elbow. Oh, 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 oh goodness! <laughs> um, uh, I, I've really got to get some sweeping done now, and um, we've we've got to, we've got lots of jobs to do, haven't we, Basco? Yeah. Yes, we've got lots of jobs. We've got to clean up the poop, the scoop, and the boop, 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 and then we've got to <laughs> yes, go and, uh, to. Yeah, yeah, we got to go to the private chambers, and we got to clean up the poop out of the 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 the, the oh, gladiators. The, oh, the scoop, well. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the boop, yeah. boop. Don't, don't forget the boop, boop. It's it really hot. You're a good boy, aren't you? <laughs> He's a very good very boy. Very good boy. <laughs> yeah. um, so much fiber in the food that they serve us. I C- had no could idea. You, um, could could you put me down now, please? Oh yes, sorry. Uh, oh god, uh, thought we were becoming friends, which I think oh, we that's... are now. Actually, Be- being being friends is painful. Um, <laughs> good. <clears throat> I hope well, that you Velda get... just I... doomed through his life to to spend time with people <laughs> with personal space issues. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact organically as well that Velda experienced punching one of his friends and he didn't like it. Yeah. But that's what happens yeah. to him in the Danger Club, <laughs> yeah. like so yeah. much, and that's like a little seed there. Now that's amazing, right? So off to the moop boop. <laughs> off to, as you're about to and head the to the moop boop, the uh, the uh, the doors uh, to the main arena open, uh, and in comes Master Olivan. Master Olivan is the owner of um, the Gladiator School. Um, so all of you are here because at some point you have accrued a debt to Master Olivan, and you have signed a contract to him to work off your debt, and so you are spending. However many years it is going to take working here, um, either as gladiators or as serving staff, uh, to pay off your debt to Master Olivan. Um, he is a uh, large, rotund man. Um, he has got a, a mop of... Um, he's got sort of black hair, a little black goatee um, as he's walking forwards. Um, he's turning to one of his attendants. He has about four attendants around him um, in servant's uniform and a couple of guards. He's turning to one of them and he says, I don't care. Send back the giraffes. I don't want them. Um, as he goes, uh, as he enters, he says, how's the training going? As he looks over all of you. 
Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the training is is going very well. We have we are mighty uh, warriors of 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 training. He threw his sword. It, should, it don't tell him about the sword. <laughs> <Don't>. <laughs> but I thought I thought you yeah, I thought you meant to do this. No, 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 no. Just um, <clears throat> keep it. Hello. Yeah, I mean, yes. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> I've got um. I'm here because I've got a task for all of you. Well, for those of you who are competent, at least. For Felix and, uh, and Rory. I've received word that um, there's another gladiator school to the south, in the town of Sandpoint. They, uh, they've uh, been splashing around some cash recently. And uh, I, hear, uh, I hear that the head of that school left Riddleport by boat a few weeks ago paying their way with several artifacts which bear a striking resemblance to some ones that were stolen from the grand tournament grounds in Riddleport itself. Uh, I hear the room I hear a rumor that the trophy from the annual uh, Riddleport games very very uh, valuable trophy was stolen quite recently. Now, I've got a suspicion that it might be down there in that other gladiator school, but I don't know it for sure. But one thing I do know is that whoever brings back that trophy to the, uh, the games is likely to be getting prime billing at the next tournament. And I want that to be my school. And that means that we're going to make some good money. So I want you... I want you to go to Sandpoint. I want you to find this new school. And I want you to make friends with them. Do it without bloodshed if you can. But I want you to search that school and I want you to find that trophy and I want you to bring it back to me. You manage that, there'll be a good reward for you. As well as a little bit of time off your contracts as well. Yes, I mean, this this sounds wonderful, doesn't it, Felix? Uh, yeah, uh, yes... Uh, okay, <laughs> uh, new environment and new people, uh, uh, more competent fighters to deal with. It sounds g g g great. Yeah, yes, it it does. <laughs> Out of character, do we know? Do we know about this trophy? Is this something we've known about before? Is this a thing? The that trophy heard of? you'd be familiar with. The trophy is the the grand the Riddleport Games are the uh, are a sort of gladiatorial contest that takes place every year, uh, and you would have known. Um, you would know that the trophy. You would know well enough um, from your circles that the trophy was stolen uh, a little while ago. So it is. It is valuable. Um, so yes, you're you're aware of that. Argus steps forward um, as he uh, as he does and says, I'm "Master Olivan, I, I've been thinking uh, a little bit about uh, the task, and uh, I'm not sure that uh, with some of our." Uh, some of our recent injuries to some of the uh, the gladiators that sending two people on their own is a good idea I'd suggest sending the servants as well um, it'll do them good to get out of the school a little bit uh, me? yes oh, but I, yes but may I, I'm I re- quite, sorry oh, oh, no, I'm, just I, I'm, quite, I'm quite happy here I, um, and we've got the the, the poop and the, the moop and the... Aye, the poop, the moop and the coop-poop-poop. Poop, poop. Yeah, so the coop-poop-poop. <laughs> um, uh, we're, um... Hey, 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 psst, hey, you. Hello? Hello there? Yes? Hey, don't be afraid. It's okay. We will go together, and you need not clean up shit all your life. You could be better than that, maybe. For a little while, do not have to clean up poop with weird dog face man here. Hey, um, I find that offensive. I've never seen one of your kind before. You're freaking me out like uh, maybe I have allergies. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's never grabbed my elbow. So, so there. Well, I'd like to request that it is these two because uh, some of the other servants, um, are, when I say hello, they don't, uh, they don't reply, which I find uh, rather... Uh, 
rather rude and I think it would be nice if these two fine young gentlemen who are and gentle uh, pug or whatever your <laughs> race is I'm not sure I don't want I'm to a be Sunni. a Sunni yes this damn fine Sunni uh, could could it uh, sister these are the two that I want then and that's a deal breaker <laughs> that's <laughs> I mean you're in charge but uh, but that's uh, what I want Rory, little tip, uh, you should never assume someone's species. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> little joke. Uh, oh, yes. Making eyes. Uh, uh, yeah, yes, yes. I, I like this. <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, well, all the other gonna... servants there be really jealous of me and Velda. Hey, Velda, this is our chance to see the world. This is our chance to get out of this place. Well, maybe um, I don't want to see the world. Maybe I, hey, I just want to stay here. It's dangerous out there. Hey, sometimes you gotta push past your, uh, you know, uh, your comfort zones and get out there and see the world. And mm. don't worry, I'll be here with you. Your oh, well, bestest as as, buddy. As long as you're there, because <laughs> you're a good boy. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> um, uh, are you going to come, Argus? Uh, I won't be. I, I will come with you as far as Sandpoint. But oh. um, Master Olivan is eager that you. Uh, Master Olivan is eager that you accomplish this task on your own. Olivan sort of shrugs. This. It's a laugh more than anything. I mean, I want to see what the scrawny one. What are you going to do, uh, Runt? Are you going to hit him with a book or something? Um, Spend more time reading than you do sweeping. Well, I, I like I like I like reading, and um, I could hit them with my broom. Hmm. Reading doesn't get shit cleaned up in my arena. You don't do anything useful around here. You might as well go. You and the dog might as well go with them. Actually, hey. if oh, I may, I, I have thrown a few objects before in my life, and I can tell you that a well-crafted book actually can make a very impressive ranged weapon. If Veldar has any of these, then they could actually do some serious damage. If you'll excuse me for speaking. Uh, <laughs> 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 the uh, <clears throat> the uh, Olivan just laughs uh, and walks over to uh, walks over to Velda and says, "Really, you think this one's going to uh, think this one's going to save the day by throwing books? Do you?" <laughs> he laughs uh, and just sort of gives Velda a bit of a shove. Um, what? She... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Velda just villain. <laughs> looks down at his sandals and, and shuffles his feet in the sand a bit and, and mumbles about how he he reads books, not for them. <laughs> Listen to me. He looks down at you. And says, "If reading books did, if reading books did any good, then you, you wouldn't have had to come to me for money to to bury your parents. You'd have been able to find some way to save them yourself. You'd have been able to do something for that village of yours. The fact is, books aren't going to help you on anything. I don't even expect you to come back alive from this mission." You might have a lot up there, and he just taps you in the head, uh, and then he just jabs you in the chest. He goes, but you got nothing in there. You're effectively worthless to me. I'm just sending you along to help carry their bags. And then he just turns uh, and walks back away from them. He says, remember, same deal applies as always when we send you outside. If any of, any of you try to run, if any of you decide that you'd, uh, you're better off elsewhere... You're welcome to try. But there's 20 gold pieces to anyone that kills somebody who tries to run from me. That offer is open to any of you. That could pay, take years off your contracts here, so all of you think about that. Yes. I expect you back within a week. There's a ship leaving to, later on this afternoon. I, su I suggest you be on it. Uh, Basco goes to um, Velda and sort of just uh, puts his arm around him and goes, Don't worry, buddy. Just ignore him. You, you've, got, you've, got, you've got what it takes. Thanks, Pasco. Come on, we've got a ship to catch. Right, yes, let's go and thank you, uh, uh, Master Olivan. Blimey. Uh, let's go and... Uh, <laughs> he's, he's not one for speeches, is he? Well, let's, um, um, uh, you know, go and get our things and um, and then we'll meet down in the... Uh, there's not a lobby here, is there? But, the, you know, essentially the... the <laughs> 
essentially the uh, place uh, before in the hotel we bar. leave uh, the, the, the actual gates uh, in 2025. Well, I don't want to, you know, <laughs> force you or anything. I mean, I mean I, I've just got three books and a broom. Um, I've just got my shovel. Yes. We don't really have anything. Sorry, what were you going to say, Felix? Felix is just, uh, he's got his fists clenched and he looks at the back of Master Olivan mm-hmm. as he walks away. Um, and his, his hair is smouldering with a little more intensity. It's a little waft of smoke coming off his hair. And he's just going, that was not very nice. <laughs> that man is bully. No. <laughs> <laughs> he is bully. Uh, I, as I walk out uh, with all the guys, I'm going to look at Barry, the nearest servant, and I go, yeah. <laughs> Barry, look at me. I'm going on a mission, and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> Barry shakes his fist and goes, Oh, Pascal, I'll cut you for this. <laughs> uh, silly Barry. <laughs> uh, Rory would like to do the same with one of the other gladiators, probably, <laughs> probably uh, Gerard. Um, hey, Gerard! Gerard, look, we're going to the other school. We're going to go and do some fighting. He looks at you. I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. <laughs> Bye, Gerard. See you soon. Felix Wait. goes to uh, Felix says to uh, Lorraine on the way out. Goes uh, good, 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 goodbye, Lorraine. You were the only one who was nice to me. I may die, but at least I will do it with friends. Uh, good luck with your sandwich making course. <laughs> she says bye, Philip. Oh, <laughs> As you make your way, you gather your uh, things. Argus turns as he goes, uh, turns to the other servants and goes, "Get back in there! Big Green needs clearing out." And you hear a growl from the uh, lower levels um, of the uh, of the school, where Big Green, the large beast whose poop you often have to scoop and boop boop boop, um, <laughs> resides. <laughs> And you make your way to you make your way to the lobby of the of the gladiator school <laughs> next to the concierge desk. There's marble. There's some doors that open. Yeah, yeah. there's a place where your really? bags are held. Like yeah. <laughs> Oliver really like splashed out on this one room, and the rest of it's just <laughs> sand. <laughs> um, Sick. So Argus leads you out of the Gladiator School through the streets um, down towards Riddleport itself uh, and towards the docks. Um, as you're walking, he says, uh, we'll ne- "You'll need to take a boat south across the bay um, to Sandpoint. It's um, it's quite a voyage, but I- I've heard there's a very good captain uh, who might be able to take you on his boat when you get there." It's it's not. Don't look at me like that. It's not Captain Gumbo. This oh. isn't Solo. Where every character, <laughs> Captain of- <laughs> Flipping Gumbo, <laughs> just because Dan loves Captain Gumbo. It's his favourite character ever. I, so, like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to shoot one minute. Yeah, he's still alive. Yeah, yeah. I consider the idea. Yeah, he's not. He wouldn't be born yet. I, I quite like no. the idea that Velda would have met Gumbo and then just completely <laughs> yeah. forgotten him because he doesn't recognise <laughs> staff. Yeah. That's a very Velder is the <laughs> Velder is the R two D two of this saga. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not a way yeah. wipe his memory. Um. <laughs> no, we are not going to just set up every every tiny bit. Um, as you're walking along, Velder knocks over a small pile of rocks uh, that a man is um, is stacking up. The man uh, stands up, shakes his fist, and goes, "Oh, you are a blight of cans, Velder." <laughs> um. ah. <laughs> I hate them. You make. <laughs> you make your way, uh, you make your way down to the docks where there is a uh, a boat moored up. Um, standing, there are a, a number of uh, Iruxi uh, around it, drawing sailors' uniforms. Iruxi are lizard folk, um, so they are lizards of, of varying colours, uh, wearing sailors' uniforms uh, and little matching sailors' little stripy t-shirts um, and little. They've got the little hats on as well. They've got the little hats on. Yeah, uh, and there is a. Uh, there is a captain among them uh, who is wearing a similar thing, but with a uh, jacket with epaulets on. Um, and uh, I think every, everything naval in our campaign is very... <laughs> <laughs> it's, only, it's just with the Regency, you know, with little whistles to come on board and, you know, things like that. <laughs> They're all wearing stockings. 
<laughs> he, um, the, uh, the Uruxi captain uh, approaches um, as you get, um, as you get closer. Hello there. My name is Captain Scarscale. The Xander Scarsale of the Obsidian Owl. We be traveling south towards Sandpoint. I hear you're looking for passage. Uh, well, no, we're looking to get on the ship, really. Aye, oh, it's a nautical term. Oh, passage. I see. Passage on this ship. Passage. Well, that's very interesting. I've not heard that term before. I'll, I'll use that in future. <laughs> <laughs> Um, did, um, did Master Oliver give anyone any money? Because I, I, I haven't got any money. Have you got Argus, any money, uh, Baltus? I, I guess says, oh. don't worry. Uh, the, uh, the voyage is paid for. Oh, oh lovely. But there, there'll be a little bit of money for food, but I don't think there'll be very much. So we best get this done as quickly as we can. Excuse me, uh, Capitaine. Uh, what was the name of your uh, fine boat again? Oh, it was called the Obsidian Owl. This is a strange name. Uh, owls fly above water and Obsidian would sink. I have little premonition about getting onto boat. Aye. Obsidian sinks and an owl flies, so an Obsidian Owl is the perfect happy medium. <laughs> I, I feel completely vindicated and thank you for putting me at ease. Uh, <laughs> I just really like owls. So do I. Don't get I many of them. them around. Don't you chase any of the owls on me ship. <laughs> I'm transporting owls to Sandpoint. And if you get them all fl- fl- ruffled up, it's going to be a, a right mess on that voyage. He looks at, um, he looks at Velda <laughs> and, like, with worry that he's not going to be able to n- not touch these owls. <laughs> it's all right. I, I, I can hold you down like I, like I did before. Oh, thanks. Thanks. That's okay. I'm getting a bit, th- I'm getting a bit sweaty. Have you ever been on a ship before? I, I've never been on a ship before. It's exciting. No. This is, uh, well, look at the water. It's, it's got a reflection of us. Uh, yeah. Uh, whoa. Oh. Mm. I sort of expected more, really, but oh, never mind. <laughs> I look quite striking, I think, actually. Um, yes, yes, I'm quite pleased with how I look. What about you, Felix? Uh, uh, how I look is, uh, not in the eyes of me, but, uh, Felix tries to remember his monk training. But in the eyes of, uh, s- s- others, and the, the way that you perceive it is not an objectific... Uh, oh. Felix's hair oh, no, sets no. alight. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Felix, you can just look in the water, and then and then you can see yourself. It, 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 Felix it's called p- a reflection. Felix puts his head in the water and just goes... <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, I'm not very proud of that. It sometimes just happens when I get overthinking. Uh, Felix, you really make me chuckle, do you know that? Uh, we're going to be such good friends, I think. Yes, definitely. Uh, By definition of friendship, this is definitely friendship. And we're on a ship, so uh, 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 some would say that that was a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I would. Uh, I grab uh, Felix grabs uh, Rory by the elbow, and then uh, Basco by the elbow, uh, and then looks oh, awkwardly at Velda. Oh. Uh, uh, um, Rory, uh, Velda just Velda sort of like gingerly takes Basco's elbow. Um, oh, whoa! Uh, this oh. is going to be an adventure of the four adventurers. <laughs> we could call ourselves, couldn't we? Really? We're adventurers? <laughs> we are now. Are we? Are we? And we're not just servants? That's correct. When we're outside oh. those walls, we're adventurers, darn it. <gasps> Wait, Velda, we're uh, adventurers, did you, finally. Did you hear that, Basco? We're adventurers. All those books you've been be, reading uh, about all those adventurers, and now we're finally one of them. Oh, uh, well, they die at the end of that book, but uh, I hope we don't die. I'm sure uh, we don't. Wait, uh, it could be... Uh, uh, if you are like Dog Man, and you, Velda, are Silphy Person of Wind, and I Smolder, we could be Wolf Wind and Fire. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. The, yeah. As you're about to yes, go babe. up the gangplank, <laughs> Wind and Fire, that is beautiful. As you're about to go up the gangplank, um, 
Argus, um, uh, Argus, uh, grabs Velda by, um, by the shoulder and just, uh, oh. turns and says, Listen, all of you, before you, uh, before you go, you should know that, um, that trophy that you're going to find, it's worth a lot of money. Um, I need to get back to the school. But when you find the trophy, when you get it, don't bring it back here. Take it to Magnamar in the south. You'll be able to sell it for a lot of money. Once you've done that, go east as far as you can. Never look back. You can get away from the. You can get away from all of this. Never have to come back to the school. You may, but you'll need to do it quietly, without anyone realizing. I know that Olivan has offered a lot of money to any of you that stops anything like this, and I can't. I can't do anything to dissuade you, but you've got a chance to be free here. Well, but well, what about you and 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 the school? I'll be all right. I'm, I'm worth I'm worth enough money to him as I am. He won't know. Uh, that's why I can't go with you. He can't know that I've got anything to do with it. It took me a lot of effort to get him to persuade to, uh, to let the servants, let you two servants go as well. But uh, you've all been good to me in the time that you've been at the school. You deserve a chance, which is more than a lot of people in there get. Anyway, it's up to you. But uh, the choice, the chance is there if you're willing to take it. No, with that. What if, what if I don't want to go? Velda, this is your chance to see the world, to, to be finally free. Maybe I don't want to see the world. Maybe maybe I'm not good enough to see the world. Maybe the world's a bit too dangerous. Maybe I just want to stay stay sweeping up at sand at the school, you know, with everyone and Argus and things. V Velda, it, it, it is dangerous. No one should lie to you. Outside world is very dangerous, but this is your chance to leave. Maybe do, I don't you, do you do you mean leave or live? Uh, uh, <laughs> Felix's chest hair sets a light. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like this man, dwarf. Sorry, I didn't. Ar Argus mean to. reaches into his pouch and takes out a small piece of paper, which he uh, which he unfolds and says, "Veldit, you got more to offer than sweeping up sand for the rest of your life." He turns it around and halt and shows you what's on the piece of paper. Um, it says Argus in a really sort of shaky, spidery script. It says, "It's because of you that I can do that. That you might not, the Olivan might not think you got a lot in your chest, but I think you do. You got a lot in your head as well, and it deserves more than being stuck in uh, some uh, stuck in some gladiator school for your whole life, but." It's your decision. I can't make it for you. It's time to go. He takes a step back. Good luck, all of you. Argus, Argus, uh, what about money? Well, you'll have to work something out. Thank you, Argus. You're a good man. And so Velda, all of you. Velda suddenly darts forward and just gives him a very big, quick hug and then sort of shuffles back awkwardly and says, oh, I miss you, Argus. And you. Now get out of here. He sort of he shuffles his feet um, and steps back. And you make your way up the gangplank onto the ship um, as the last few things uh, are loaded onto it. The gangplank is pulled up. Captain Scarscale gives the order and the sails are unfurled. And the Obsidian Owl begins sailing south. Uh, and as you stand looking out, um, Basco, you look over at a crate next to you and you just hear a from inside the crate. <laughs> and that's where we leave it for tonight. Yay! That's the end of our first remote yeah. episode, everybody. Woo -woo. We will be back Woo. next week for more adventures from the Young Velda Chronicles. We'll see you then. Yeah.